Hello and welcome to our webinar with the topic News, Light and Building 2016, Part 1. So you see it will be there will be a part two later on. Yeah, my name is Thorsten Reibel. I'm here together with Jürgen, Jürgen Schilder, and we will share this webinar approximately one hour. This time we have no questionnaire at the end of the webinar for you, so it's more an informational webinar today. But of course you can send us any questions in the chat. As always, we try to answer these questions uh, during the webinar or at the end of the webinar. If not possible, we will do it together with our feedback email, which will be sent to you containing the presentation of this webinar, but also the recorded webinar file. So, what is planned for today, for the next hour around? New Light and Building 2016, not very long time ago. We had our uh, big uh, fair here in Frankfurt and we have shown some new interesting products, of course. Today we will talk about some news around KNX, which is an analog output application controller and two devices around uh, an ocean connection to KNX, uh, magnetic contact and the valve drive. And additionally, our own uh, home automation system, ABB Free at Home, has some news. Um, today we talk about the new fan call actuator for Free at Home system. A weather station will be available and a new touch panel for free at home. Then we continue a bit with some general KNX topics, uh, let me say, um, yeah, from the KNX organization. So it has to do with uh, yeah, an additional software concept, ETS Insight so called, uh, we inform you a bit, and about the uh, topic uh, KNX Secure means uh, secured data communication on KNX. And then we continue with a marketing tool, let's say, Building Space Office. It's an online tool to, to see functions and also products from ABB in an office building. Yeah, and as mentioned, we will have a second part of our uh, new slide on building. This will be on the 27th of April, so in three weeks. Then we will talk about more KNX devices, free at home wireless we have shown on the fair, ABB welcome, door entry system, and some more news you will see. So we will send you, of course, on time also then um, the invitation to this next webinar. But let's start with our content from today. And I would like to start with the KNX analog actuator, analog outputs. Um, we had already devices uh, for this um, yeah, solution, but there will be two new components. The first one is a DIN rail component, also with four channels, AAS412. So it's now our own product, not a brand labeled device anymore as a still existing components. And in addition, we have a yeah, surface mounted component uh, in a small box. So similar to the analog input, we have already in the same type uh, with IP54 housing. So for decentralized installation with two channels. Yeah, these devices will replace our still existing um, analog actuators, AAS 4.1, but uh, it's only a DIN rail component with four channels. And there is a yeah, extension module available at the moment. Uh, you can connect directly with a, with a bridge to this main unit here to have uh, in total eight outputs. So this will be replaced by our new four fold uh, analog actuator for DIN rail mounting. Yeah. Analog outputs, components with analog outputs, what is yeah, the solution? First of all, in principle, very simple. You convert digital KNX bus signals into analog output signals. And these typical output signals uh, are shown here. So voltage dependent outputs, uh, 0 to 1 volt, to 5 volt, to 10 volt, or current dependent outputs, typically 0 to 20 milliampere or 4 to 20 milliampere. So you have to control any external device, typically in HVAC applications, any valve for example, any ventilation flap, any uh, yeah, uh, frequency converter to, to run different speeds uh, of a fan motor, you need these analog signals to control these units. Yeah. Um, other solution is uh, if you have fan core unit control with continuous fan speed control. You remember normally we have three relays to run the fan in three speeds, but sometimes you need a 0 to 10 volt control signal to run the fan uh, continuously. And then you can use this device as well. For valve control, so you need then only uh, electronic output. We have in our valve drive actuator, for example, or in our electronic switch actuator ESS. 
Yeah? Or any other device in the field of, of HVAC application where you need these yeah, current or voltage-based control signals to control anything. Speed, position, uh, set point, whatever. Uh, a bit more special application, but sometimes also existing. There are yeah, kind of, of dimmer on the market, which need an active 0 or 1 to 10 volt control signal. Different from our switch dim actuators, which have a passive one, where you have an, uh, an additional 10 volt necessary. But sometimes you need this active signal, and then you can use these uh, analog actuators as well. You will see later on in the application, there are also parameters for dimming integrated. And then you need only an additional switch actuator to, to operate the load circuit, the power circuit. Yeah. But the main application here in HVAC for any analog outputs. Um, yeah, what is new in these components? Um, hard and software are different. First of all, uh, the hardware is, as I already mentioned, our own component now. We have now a wide range supply voltage input between 100 and 230 volt AC. It means any voltage in the world uh, you might have um, fits to this device. Um, the power supply for the device and the power supply for the external devices, for example, for the valve, are now galvanically isolated, which was not existing before. There you needed two different uh, yeah, power supplies. Now it's galvanically isolated and yeah, much better than uh, the existing device. Power supply is only necessary for this DIN-Rail device. Uh, <coughs> surface mounted component you see here, the two outputs, is completely bus supplied. So the bus voltage, the bus um, connection is enough to supply also the internal electronic. But this results then in a limited functionality in terms of, of, uh, of outputs. Here we have only voltage-dependent output available in this surface-mounted device. You will see it later in a, another slide, in the overview slide, overview slide um, how it looks like. Yeah, then we have improved the, the accuracy of the outputs compared with the existing one. And the software functions, of course, also improved. First of all, as expected, um, both devices will be supported by the ABB IBUS tool for easier commissioning, for testing. I will show you also here two screenshots, what's available there. Um, in the former slide, in the, in the slide before, I've shown you the different voltage and, and current dependent outputs. Um, for example, if you need a special output signal between maybe 2 and 8 volt only, then you choose, okay, maybe 0 to 10 volt, but you can still then adapt the output signal. You can limit the, in and, uh, the minimum and maximum value by yeah, uh, this so-called characteristic curve adaption. Also a further option here in the parameters. Yeah, it can be integrated into scenes, uh, also these outputs, for example, with any dimming outputs. And we have now more data point types supported um, for the input signals. So if you send LA Telegram, it can be between one byte and, and four byte signals with, diff with different um, sub data types. Yeah, we can see it here. On the next slide, a screenshot for the analog output with yeah, two channels, surface mounted. Type of output you see here, only voltage dependent outputs are available. No current. And the type of, of input, input signal as a telegram from the KNX bus between 1 byte and 4 byte. And with all these uh, sub data types you can see here. And if you have a look to the further parameters, you see here enable functionality dimming. If you say yes, then you have additional group objects for byte, uh, sorry, for bit dimming uh, available. We have here so-called forced operation to, to bring the output in a in a certain position on a certain value, for example. Yeah. Um, yeah. So some more parameters available here, and uh, yeah, to improve this device. Yeah. And if you look to the DIN-RAIL component, very similar. This screenshot, different here that you can also choose a current dependent output, typically 0 to 20 milliampere or 4 to 20 milliampere. The rest is more or less the same. And um, yeah, four channels, as already mentioned, available here. Yeah, screenshot of the IBAS tool support, um, which will be available for both devices. Um, here we have a screenshot of the four-fold component, channel A to C. Uh, to D, sorry. Two channels are active at the moment. One has a 1 to 10 volt 
voltage output, the other one 0 to 20 milliampere, and we see also the momentary output value shown here. No failure, you see, first operation if it's active will be shown here, and also cyclical monitoring of the incoming telegram can be parameterized here. So it's a simple monitoring of the status of uh, all outputs, but you can go also deeper in, in each channel. Here an example for the, the 1 to 10 volt output. Um, yeah, what you can do here, or you can see here first of all, it's a real output signal again, in this case 6.1 volt, and the incoming telegram value um, will be shown here as well, and you can override both values by typing in a new value and then you confirm this and then you say for example I would like to have now 8 volt just to simulate anything to test anything though it's not the real value and of course you can um, reset this to have the original value active again. So it's similar to the solution we have already in the, our weather unit um, to override any measured values. Yeah, furthermore, you have here the option to integrate it into any scenes. Uh, you can activate if you have done a program this a scene directly here and um, see also these assigned values for this output depending on the scene you have chosen. Yeah, price positioning uh, of our new devices compared with the existing one. You see here an, uh, our new analog output for two, uh, 412 compared with the existing one, 440 euro, compared with 380 euro, so we are lower in price, but more functionality. And our yeah, decentralized components with two channels than 275 euros. So I think it's a quite good situation. Uh, and again, it's our own product now, not brand, not brand labeled anymore, and um, gives us here some more options. Yeah, some more details um, Yeah, uh, you should know. First of all, when will the products or these products be available? It's in July this year, so still three months left, but um, product is visible, let's say. Yeah, the rest is more or less clear. Four channels, two channels, DIN rail component, surface mounted, power supply, again, only necessary for this DIN rail device. Uh, the surface mounted device can be supplied directly via KNX bus. Um, Okay, you have voltage output for both, but only for the DIN rail components, the current uh, output. Yeah, extension module, of course, not necessary anymore and only existing for the yeah, product we have still right now. Good. Let's come to the next product. Yeah, very important and interesting. Uh, our new logic controller, ABA slash S121. Um, our customers were very interested on the light and building fair in this product um, and we have shown a lot what is possible and uh, with this device and uh, how does it work in principle. Let me summarize a bit the functions here, so not all details today. When we launch this product, of course, you will get some more information. So what is the message behind this product here? The new logic controller is an extremely powerful device for almost unlimited customized logic functions in, in building automation, of course. So it's really very powerful, has a lot of different functions. And of course, it can cover uh, a lot of requirements um, in building automation, where you need additional functions like logic, like mathematical function, like comparing values or whatever. So I'll give you an overview of uh, the main features. So it will cover a lot of features or let me say requirements uh, in building automation. Yeah. And it offers also new features we hadn't before, for example, for HVAC solutions. I will come to this. Yeah, um, how many functions or functional blocks, we have to say, are available? It's an amazing number, 3,000. 3,000 independent functional blocks in one device. If you compare this with the still existing application unit logic we have, for many years on, on the market, ABLS 2.1, it has only 140 in one device. So in quantity, much more, but also in quality, um, much more different functions. Uh, I mentioned already mathematical functions. We have a uh, complete calendar and time functions integrated. I mentioned already HVAC functions. So we have a so-called PID controller uh, available. You can program. Simulation is possible. I come to this. You can create your own functional blocks 
And if you look to the housing of the component, you see here the KNX connection, of course, but in addition, a LAN connection, which gives you further options. I come to this. And last but not least, down there we need an additional power supply. It's a very powerful processor inside, so we cannot supply it only via the KNX bus. So 24 volt DC power supply is necessary in addition. Yeah, let's come to some more features. If you know our existing application unit logic, ABLS 2.1, you might remember this graphical programming interface. So you, have a <coughs> so you have a worksheet where you can position your your function elements, you can connect it to any outputs, and then you create graphically your, your function. Um, I will show you also today a bit uh, the software, very short only, but you will get a first impression if you don't know uh, already how it does it work in principle. Yeah. Important is that we have of course an application software available for this device. Uh, we can import into the ETS as with normal devices. You need no additional software anymore. You need nothing else but the ETS. If you click later on on the uh, parameter button, then you will see the graphical environment and you can do your work. Yeah? So everything inside the ETS. Yeah, a lot of functions I will show you directly in the, in the software, what is all available um, in each device. Yeah, um, you can create your own comprehensive logic and you can store this as a self-defined functional block. So allowing you to, to have your own intelligence hidden in a, in a black box, let's say, uh, only the in and outputs then visible and um, you can maybe sell it as your own intelligence or you can use it in many other projects in future. Uh, so it's a very nice feature, um, saving your intelligence, let's say your, your functions in an individual customized self-defined block. Yeah, the LAN interface already mentioned, what does it allow to do? First of all, it allows you to get assess via LAN to this yeah, internal software, to internal functions of this device, allowing you to change values. For example, you would like to change a set point of a controller, of a PID controller, yeah, or to display actual values. So we can differentiate later on in the software which part of these functions are visible via web user interface and which are only inside the device and only accessible via the ETS. So selected functions can be uh, can be ma ma made accessible for the end user, for the customer, but not all if you want, without ETS. Yeah, we have an inbuilt simulation function. Um, what does it mean? You can simulate offline your functions. Um, I will show it to you also. Just to check is your, your, your logic properly working? Yeah, or do you have to change anything? So you don't have to test everything on the side with all the in and outputs behind. You can do it offline directly in your component with a so-called logic simulator, a graphical such a logic simulator inside uh, the as a software. But if you are already online with your device in a real project, uh, you can see also live the logical status of all your functions directly in this graphical environment. So it helps you also to see is everything properly working or do we have to change anything. Yeah? So in case of any troubleshooting, it makes it much easier now to see what's wrong and what has to be uh, modified, for example. Yeah, a big topic in a KNX system, especially with logic, is what happens in case of bus power failure. Um, so here we have the situation that uh, short power failures uh, less than one minute will be bridged by the internal energy buffer. So after recovery of the, volt uh, of the bus voltage, it will be, yeah, the system will continuous, continuously running, so no change. So of course, if you have to buffer longer periods, um, we have to buffer it uh, via the KNX bus voltage supply via an un uninterrupted power supply. We have also in our range, of course. Um, second option for using the LAN interface um, is to have a fast download. Um, you can imagine if you have 3000 functional blocks available, you have a very comprehensive uh, yeah, software functionality inside with a lot of data inside the memory you have to download. And that would take a lot of time if you use a standard uh, download via the twisted pair cable. So in this case, you can use a direct connection between your PC and your uh, component to download directly via the LAN connection, uh, saving a lot of time during commissioning. 
Yeah, list price and availability. So um, will be 700 euros the list price. You will see on the next slide if you compare this with our existing components, a very good uh, price and availability still sometimes necessary to, to, to finalize the software, especially to test everything. Um, so available September, but this year, <laughs> 2016. So still half a year we need for the final work to do. Yeah, in, in comparison with the existing and also in future still existing devices, our logic module, our application unit logic, ABLS, already mentioned, with 140 functions only, and our special component for, for mainly for time functions, application unit time, plus also, yeah, um, yeah, um, kind of telegram multiplier is also integrated. You see, the price is really good. And if I show you right now the, the, the performance of the device, um, then you will be really amazed about this component. Good, then allow me to go directly into the ETS to give you a small impression of the component inside the ETS. So I share with you the ETS. Just a moment. Okay, so I'm now inside the ETS. I have already inserted here my application, sorry, my logic controller, not application, logic controller. Um, one device. If you click on parameter, you don't see any direct parameter window with text. You have to have to open a product specific parameter dialog like in the application unit logic. Takes some time and then it opens the graphical environment. Just a moment, I have to position this a bit here for our recording. It opens the graphical environment similar to the application unit uh, ABLS 2.1 where you have a working sheet or worksheet here. By the way, you can create many worksheets by this plus button, add new worksheet, that's new. So many are possible in principle. And on the left you have all these elements. I go through uh, these elements a bit. And on the right, later on you will see it, if I activate an element you see here some parameters. And in addition you have some, some functions here in the menu you see here simulation, yeah, remember, you can simulate a logical function, I will show to you. So on the left you see here different kind of data types for inputs and also outputs. So from an arrow from, from left to right is an input, from right to left it's an output. So all different data types we can process here. Then we have yeah, special data types. I, I just do one, or insert here one um, input, for example, here you see the K and X input, and if you have positioned this, you see on the left, not yet finished all these parameters on the right here, some options to change parameters, for example. Yeah. And if I use here an input down there, what is the difference? Website input. Website input means these assign group address or this input will be later on available via the web interface. There's an integrated web server as already mentioned, so this will be a solution. Maybe this is accessible remotely if you want, but this one not accessible. So you we distinguish here between normal in and outputs and website in and outputs. So you see not only from one bit to four byte, but also date and time is available here. Three byte, for example, can be used also. So time function is not a problem to implement. Yeah, behind or after all these in and outputs we have here our logical functions and or nothing special at the moment. We have here new functions like comparison yeah, uh, of values uh, available here. We have yeah, multiplexer, the gate is very important function you might remember from the application unit ABLS 2.1 but also in addition mathematical functions. Only a short overview at the moment, no details. Flip-flop is also integrated, counter, yeah, standard uh, time and, 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 and stack is functionality here, and signal generator means you can um, yeah, assign here fixed values. For example, you would like to compare uh, any value, you have to assign a fixed value, you take this input here and assign a fixed value and then it's done. Yeah, I, remember, I mentioned already calendar, time functions, 
conversion of data types as possible. PID controller. This is really new. So you have a complete PID controller integrated, allowing you to to create a PID controller, a PD or PI controller only uh, with certain values behind. Yeah? So independent of any uh, room temperature controller you might have in your project, you can create any regulation here. Yeah, allow me to show you a simple example of one gate of one function. I take in another input here. Before come to other functions, I take in a uh, simple end gate. And of course I need an output uh, here. And I connect this as in our existing device. You click on this button here, on this pin, left mouse button, keep it pressed, and then you connect it to your input of this logical gate. It's the same with the next input, and here to the output. Finished is my logical function and function with two inputs only. Yeah. Um, by the way, the group address assignment you have to do later on on the ATS level. If I go back here to the ATS directly, then you find these uh, group objects, of course, communication objects, where you will assign the group objects. But to show you the principle of simulation, that's enough at the moment. I go here to simulation. Then it changed over to the simulation worksheet, let's say. Different is now, you see still your components you have uh, positioned here, placed here, but you find here at the input a plus sign. If I click on this, you can set uh, yeah, a value. In this case, it's a digital input, um, one bit only. You can say one or zero. Let's take one. And if I confirm this, you see, you s down there are true and false information. Of course, I have a true situation here. It's value one coming to the input of the end gate, end gate, but the second input is still false, zero, so the output is additionally still false as, as well. To change this, I can also say here, please value one for input, co confirm it, and then of course, also the output is true, has value one. So it's a very simple logic here, and a complex logic, you can see exactly what happens. You can do this also stepwise, not only <coughs> in real time, I have to adjust it here, but also in steps or slowly or very fast. Yeah? So it gives you a real option here to simulate what you have done. Another button here is real time. If you are online and your uh, KNX installation with such a component in your logic, so real in and outputs are behind, you see also directly online what's going on in your logic if you want. So very, very user friendly here. Good. So back to the editor mode here. Uh, I go down again. Uh, just to show you... Ah, yeah, okay. Composite function block. What does it mean? You can create your own self-defined logic, but to do this you have to choose these composite function... Composite function blocks means special inputs. And I do this again. Of course you can also delete here something. Let me allow to delete this here. To have more space. So, a function block input. I do the same the output. Allow me to create a very simple logic which consists only of a negation. I have here also a special block negation. Then I connect this, so very simple function. But you can create any complex function, any complex logic, and you would like to create now your own yeah, hidden functional block with the logic you have done here inside. How to do this? You use these function block in and outputs. You mark left mouse button, keep it pressed, you mark what you have done, and then you find over there, create composite function block. And if I do this, I can give a name to this, can confirm this, and then if you go down to the end of this left window, you find here under the chapter own function blocks, my created functional block. Test one, I can take again and position here in my worksheet. But now it shows me only an input, in principle this input here and an output. What's behind, what's inside, it's not visible here. Only available for you uh, who has created this functional block. So very nice, you can export this, you can use it in many projects. Yeah? 
um, but nobody sees except you what's behind. Also available. Yeah, I think I stop here. Uh, ah, Jürgen gives you still a hint before I come to this. I show you here if you can zoom, of course, as, as well here. Um, important is that, of course, uh, an in or output, something you see later on in the in the group objects of the ETS, can be named. So if I click on this input, you find here a name, KNX input, okay, this is very abstract. You can say, no, no, it's uh, switch room one, whatever it is. So it's a real function behind any signal, or this is a brightness sensor here, coming from a brightness sensor. Huh? So we can really name this. Very helpful because you would like to see later on in the ETS what's really behind these, all these in and outputs you have created here. Yeah, we can have a look directly. I shut down here this plugin. I close it. Of course, save what you have done. That's important. You will be, will be back in the ETS. And if you go to the group objects, you see my three elements I have connected at the moment. But the two inputs have real names I have just given to these inputs. And here you assign your group addresses, as you know, from all standard KNX devices. Okay, I keep it here, just the first impression. Of course, if we launch the product, you will get more detailed information and some more details of the software as well. So allow me to go back to my presentation. We have some more news for you. And I would like to continue with yeah, uh, two other devices which have to do with the connection to N Ocean, to a wireless communication standard. Um, I hope you remember we have already a KNX N Ocean gateway available. You see it here, eg slash a, connecting our KNX world with any wireless N Ocean components. N Ocean is also, uh, um, yeah, manufacturer independent standard for for uh, yeah. Uh, in building automation. There are a lot of components on the market. Up to now we had only our KNX and Ocean Gateway, but now we have changed this. We have also two N Ocean sensors, let's say, wireless sensors to be connected via our N Ocean Gateway to our standard KNX world with all the actuators and further devices. And there are two components behind a valve drive, wireless of course, and magnetic read contact. As ABB devices. Now, so what's behind? First of all, I would like to come to the uh, valve drive. Uh, yeah, to the valve drive. You see here, it's a proportional valve drive for controlling any heating or cooling valves. So classical room temperature control is a topic behind, but no wires necessary. It's a wireless communication to our gateway and to other KNX devices. For example, our KNX room temperature controller which is installed the standard way we are wired, we are wires. So, uh, what are the benefits of the solution? Very easy to mount. You have to mount it only on the on the base, on the valve base. You need no wires. Yeah. Um, you have a display here showing you the, the current set, uh, set point temperature, for example, but also any status information, any alarms if uh, existing. Um, not really visible, but here is also uh, a turnable knob on top. Um, uh, just a moment, I have a better, so it's here, <laughs> a better pointer. Um, you can, as a user, change here the set point. And this device will then communicate this changed set point to the real room thermostat, KNX room thermostat in your installation. And then, of course, a new control value will be sent out to this device to have a different room temperature. So it's a real communication in both directions between this device and your KNX uh, installation. Um, of course, you remember, or hope so, you remember it's uh, the, the um, an Ocean KNX gateway is also supported by our IBUS tool. And uh, here you can also see the signal strength between this component and our KNX and Ocean gateway. Um, it's a wireless communication, it's not endless, the distance between a sensor and uh, the, the gateway. So we have to be sure that we have a correct and, and safe communication. And our IBAS tool, we can see the signal strengths graphically and can check is everything fine. Very nice feature, only in our KNX uh, in Ocean Gateway. Yeah, um, no wires, so but we need energy for this component. It's a motor behind, so there are batteries inside. Batteries which are maintenance free for yeah, for an operation of four hours. 
Sorry, for years. <laughs> Jürgen gave me the correction. Uh, not for hours, for years, of course. Um, good. Yeah, short screenshot of the ETS application. You see here the group objects. Um, no details at the moment, but uh, it's it's like a complete uh, yeah uh, Valve drive with any status information available on KNX and later on, and of course sending control values and so on. So it's part of our plugin of the NOcean KNX gateway here. Yeah, second device KNX uh, and Ocean connection is this wireless magnetic read contact. Very simple. Um, just to detect is a window or door open or close. <coughs> not more and not less. But either here, very simple integration into our KNX world uh, and our KNX and Ocean Gateway possible. Easy to mount either via screws or via, you can glue it as well on the frame, on the window itself, on the door itself. Uh, in this case, no battery. We have solar cells or solar cell inside. And um, so you need only two hours per day, very low brightness, just to, to, to charge an internal capacitor to have enough energy for the whole day uh, to detect is a window open or close. Also connected to our iBus tool with signal threads monitoring. Um, so same concept as in the former device. But also now available from ABB as an ABB product. Yeah, screenshot here from the ETS. Uh, yeah, very simple. Only one status information necessary is a window open or close. A one bit telegram zero or one. Good. Availability and price. Um, the Valve Drive available in May this year. Um, price not yet fixed, but I think very soon. Um, it will be available in the next month, so no information at the moment, but will come, of course. The magnetic read contact is already available. Uh, list price in Euro, 91 Euros. Yeah. Then I come to, uh, oh, I leave now KNX technology. I come to our yeah, home automation system, free at home, ABB specific solution, uh, available over two years now and, and really successful. So of course, we also extend the range of products here. And there are three products I would like to show uh, to you today. Um, first of all, we have now, a f or will have <laughs> very soon, a fan call actuator for our free at home technology. So a fan call actuator, most of you know this from the KNX world, it's for controlling fan call units. A valve and also a fan has to be controlled in a fan call unit. So what do we have? We have three relays for controlling the fan speed in three levels. As you might remember from the KNX devices, we have two electronic outputs to control valve drives. Both electrothermal valve drives are possible, but also motor valve drives. And in addition, two binary inputs for any potential free contacts, uh, like a window contact or a drip tray sensor you might have in your installation. Yeah, electrothermal valve drives and motor valve drives can be connected. You see here a connection diagram. Two electrothermal valve drives could be connected. What does it mean finally? You can control a two pipe system for heating or for cooling. Also for heating. And not, not at the same time, but for heating or cooling, depending on the season. Um, so sometimes hot, sometimes cold water in the system. But then, then you need a switching object between summer and, and winter mode or cold and, and or cooling and, and, and heating mode. Or you have a four pipe system, then you need two valve drives, of course. Independent pipes for hot and, and cold water. That's also possible with electrothermal valve drives. Yeah, if you have motor valve drives, you can connect only one motor drive because you need two outputs, uh, either a two-pipe system for heating or for cooling. If you have, again, both existing, depending on the season, you need, again, a switching object to change between heating and cooling. Comes normally from the room thermostat to switch between heating and cooling mode. Yeah, overview of the hardware. I think most of it I've shown already. Uh, some technical data here. Um, Interesting is we can, of course, it's important for fan call units, change in the software between step switch control and change over switch control of the fan. It's very important to see or to have the right constellation here, um, depending on the type of fan. Yeah, the two binary inputs I mentioned already. And let's have a look 
yeah, to some parameters. Uh, if you have already contact or had already contact or some experience with free at home, there are not so many parameters in the devices. Yeah? It's it's very simple concept and. Um, the, the standard functions are easily programmable, but for the fan call actuator we need some parameters. Some I have discussed already with you a bit. Type of valve can be different. You have seen the way of, of fan speed control, step switch or change over switch is important to be adjusted correctly. Um, but we have also some other features here like quiet fan mode or night mode means reduce the speed of the fan, a kind of limitation of the fan speed. And some more parameters, uh, so but not so as, so many as in, in the KNX uh, fan call actuator. Yeah, for fan call unit control, of course, you need a room thermostat. This is not new, the device you see here, because we had, had already heating actuator in, in, in our free at home world. Um, in principle, the same device, uh, either very simple to operate. It shows you here the, the current set point. You can change the operating mode from comfort to echo to frost mode to off. Um, um, but in addition, we can change now also the fan speed. So if you connect a fan call actuator together with our free at home room thermostat, then automatically it allows you to change also the fan speed with this right mouse button here. Um, and the only new thing here is that there is an additional and new cover plate available for this room temperature controller showing you here a symbol that you can change the fan speed as well. Yeah. So it's only another cover plate, but the hardware uh, is the same. If you connect again directly fan call actuator and this device and you have already uh, or, or, uh, completely the, the fan call application inside this room temperature controller running already. Good, two other devices before I hand over to Jürgen. Uh, in the free at home world, we have now, and many people waited for this, also a weather station. Um, if you have a look to the device, it's 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 similar to the KNX solution we have already, but there was an additional DIN rail component necessary. Here you can connect directly the free at home bus. Yeah, for detecting the main uh, values, um, um, yeah, climate values, let's say, brightness, temperature, wind speed, and also rain. That's available here. Um, in principle, the power supply for the device is via the bus voltage. So you don't need, in principle, 230 volt power supply, but you can connect this 230 volt in order to have this rain sensor heated. It's important if you'd like to have a correct uh, information about rain. If raindrops are still on this detection area and no rain exists anymore, you have to heat or to, to vaporize uh, uh, the drops, otherwise you have still the information rain. So if you would like to have this function, you need 230 volt connection. Yeah, weather data can be visualized in the free at home web interface. You remember this maybe and also in the app, of course. It's very simple for the end user to see the actual um, yeah, climate values, let's say. Outside, but are there also some some features inside like um, yeah doing the following here a shading scenario? What does it mean? For example, if you exceed uh, thirty thousand lux outside on your facade, you can say okay, please blind should go down to fifty percent, sorry fifty percent, or to any other value. Uh, so also some some yeah intelligent functions inside this component. Yeah, other values, okay, um, just for your information, wind speed up to 30 meter per second, um, voltage connection only if necessary for the rain sensor heating, up to 100,000 lux can be measured. So standard, let's say, and temperature range for temperature measurement from minus 20 to, to 55 degrees. For the applications we see behind free at home, it's absolute, absolutely sufficient in our opinion. Yeah, and last but not least, an additional new yeah, component for free at home. It's a small panel with 4.3 inch range or the size of the display. So it's more or less the size of a, of a smartphone, just to have four pages only configurable. So four different pages can be configured and each page with up to four functions. So in total, 16 functions you can operate directly from this small touch panel. So it's not a not a big touch panel, not neither a big visualization, but for 
Selected functions is simple and, and user-friendly way to operate anything centrally. In addition, if your component goes to standby mode, means display is off, by pressing with uh, three fingers on the touch uh, area here, you can have a kind of primary function. Yeah? So an additional welcome function could be activated here. It needs additional power supply, 24 volt, necessary. You can use a second pair of the wires. Um, to be configured as the big one, the big version we have already, the 7 inch version, um, directly in the, uh, in the yeah, panel area of this user interface. Uh, you know if you are connected to the system assess point, you come directly into the internal software and you can adjust everything there. Uh, furthermore, any, any yeah, action you have here on the touch panel by, by, by your fingertip will be confirmed uh, acoustically but also optically. Uh, so it's, it's really user friendly. And as already mentioned, after a certain time, display will go to standby mode, uh, just to have nothing visible and, and to save a bit of energy. Yeah, available in black and white. You have seen it. Uh, go back. You have seen it here already uh, in this slide. So black and white version available. Uh, quite good resolution for such a small um, display. And yeah, it's a complete glass surface here, so you don't see. Uh, any any yeah, frame or whatever installation height so comes what comes out of the wall is only eight millimeters yeah to install this you need this yeah flush mounting box which fits to this device installation depth is only 50 millimeters and um, the connection of the so let me say the mounting of this display is um, either very user friendly it's the magnetic way, what does it mean? There is a magnetic catch inside, so you need no tool to mount this and to demount this, if you want. Good, we have an additional feature here. There's an integrated room temperature. Yeah, sensor inside, but not only sensor, but also controller software. You see here this yeah, double button, so we have here three buttons or three functions only on this, uh, in this example. This is for room temperature control here. So you can use it as a room temperature controller inside your uh, your room, in the room. It's called mode 1 internal sensor, but we have also an external sensor available which can be connected here for any external temperature measurement if necessary. Interesting is mode 3. You have still internal measurement, but you use this external sensor just to monitor the temperature on your, your, your bottom on your ground if you have any floor heating system, for example to avoid any floor overheating. So you don't want to have too high temperature uh, on the ground um, and can be measured and if you reach this level, temperature control will be, will be switched off. So another feature which is required sometimes on the market. Yeah, finally to availability and price situation of the free at home components. So Fenco actuator available in May this year. Uh, 197 euros. The weather station costs 510 euros. Availability <laughs> 2060 mentioned here. Very soon, hopefully, we have still an issue with our supplier of the sensor here, um, but uh, we are quite optimistic that it will be solved very soon. So within the next two months, I think it will be available. So really finish the product. Only some some internal topics still to be clarified. Yeah, and the panel already uh, available in June this year for almost seven, uh, 400 euros. The mounting box, of course, as well, and also the external temperature sensor. Okay, so I would stop here. Uh, I hand over to Jürgen now. He has still some more interesting information for you. Just a moment, please. Hello and welcome to the second part of this webinar. My name is Jürgen Schilder and I'm continuing with some news of the KNX Association. So please let me start with one of the first new topic of the KNX Association. Up to now the ETS Professional was the only software which was available to create and edit a new KNX project. And now the KNX Association has launched or has intro uh, introduced a new software which is called the so-called ETS Insight. And with this ETS Insight it is also possible to create and to project a small sized uh, project. 
uh, like for example residential apartment or family home. So the ETS software, uh, Inside software, is a uh, yeah, simple software with less text and more symbols. So it looks like a little, little bit different since the ETS professional. We need also additional hardware. So in the KNX installation we have our so-called ETS Inside device. This is a kind, for example, of controller which is linked to the KNX installation and to the IP network. And here in this so-called ETS Inside device we have the ETS data and the project. Both is also stored here inside. <clears throat> Additionally, the user interface is decoupled from the ETS data. Uh, depending on this principle, it is possible to have access via a tablet or via a smartphone or a standard other browser, for example, to our ETS Inside project and we can also edit or create via such a tablet a small KNX project. So now we have two <coughs> sorry, we have in future two possibilities to create one project with the ETS professional like before or to create a project here with the ETS inside software. When we create a project like before with the, <coughs> with the ETS professional software, it is also possible to synchronize it and to store this uh, ETS professional project here in the ETS inside device. And the installer or the system integrator for example can unblock some features or functions and the end user has now the possibility via the smartphone or via his tablet for example to <coughs> to modify some functions yeah, to change for example uh, the connection between a sensor or a rocker or to create for example or to set some special scenes so this is really new that we have or in future maybe it should be <coughs> available in October here this new software ETS inside with an additional hardware controller. <coughs> so the next topic is so so called KNX Secure. Uh, the safety requirements of a KNX installation now is growing. Uh, some of you have heard about the hackers who intrude in building technology or chesters who switch on the lights at the neighbors and boast of it. However, criminal energy and related know-how can cause immense damage in a KNX installation. Therefore, the KNX security is a very important red-hot subject. Critical and confidential information, information is increasingly transmitted due to extended application areas. These are, for instance, information on energy consumption data that should not be seen by third parties, for example, when we want to send the energy consumption from one building to a central building, uh, or the signals of flocking system, like door contacts or door uh, access system, which have to be protected against manipulation, so that it should not be possible in a hotel maybe to send a command via your ETS uh, on the laptop and open a door, or KNX devices for critical functions with, with uh, which only shall communicate with authenticated party peasants. Now we see it is very important future to protect KNX installation because today we have Wi-Fi, we have uh, uh, network access, we have wireless operation concepts and applications in sensible areas. So it is really increase the risk of damage uh, by unwanted intruders. According to this, but also other requirements, the KNX Association now has developed a new security concept, the so-called data secure and the data, uh, sorry, the IP secure and the KNX data secure. Let me show you now that what's the difference or what's behind this new KNX secure concepts. On the left side here, you can see the KNX IP secure. IP means we have here a secure communication on the IP network. And on the right side, we have the KNX data secure. Data secure means we have a secure communication between a rocker, a KNX device, via twisted pair, to our other uh, to another KNX device, which can be an actuator. On the sli next slides, we'll see more details. Here, for example, we have the KNX IP secure. IP secure means that all telegrams between two IP devices, IP couplers or IP routers or the visualization or IP interface are now secured. 
So this so-called IP secure yeah, is important here maybe for communication on the IP network between two or more buildings. So the complete KNX, KNXNet IP protocol or frame is now encrypted and so no one has the chance here to listen or to simulate a KNXNet IP protocol. So what does it mean? All KNX IP devices here maybe have to be considered and must be able to support or to use this KNX IP secure protocol. So um, this is very important for the manufacturers because the manufacturers of the KNX IP routers they have to adapt their KNX IP devices. On the next slide you can see here on the left side the principle of the KNX data secure communication. KNX data means we are here for example in our KNX twisted pair line. Uh, we have here our areas, we have our twisted pair line couplers and we have here another KNX line. So the KNX data secure protocol guarantees that we have a se uh, secure communication between our KNX sensor here, which can be a binary input or uh, the channel of a security terminal, which sends a secure KNX telegram here in our twisted pair line over the KNX area line or backbone line into another area, maybe here to our actuator. So we have here a secured communication between the group object or group <coughs> communication object here of a sensor and the actuator. This is the principle of the KNX data, data secure. Of course, the manufacturer of these devices here must also adapt their devices that they, will, uh, that they are able to use or to support this KNX data secure protocol. So very important in a KNX installation <coughs> We can of course use both um, um, both principles, both concepts, the KNX IP secure when we communicate via the IP network and the KNX data secure data secure concept for communication in the lines. And it's also possible to have maybe secured and unsecured applications parallel. So for example, we need a secured communication between our binary input and our switch actuator, maybe which send the command for opening the door. But we need, uh, we can use an unsecured communication between the rocker of a sensor and the switch actuator for switching the light. And of course, it is also possible <coughs> to integrate um, the new security, <coughs> the new security concepts also in existing installation. But maybe we have to update also software update the KNX devices. And these both new security concepts yeah, will be supported with the new ETS version 5.5, which should be available at the, uh, October this year. For more details, <coughs> there are still some papers available. One is the security checklist and the security posi position paper, which are uh, on the website of the KNX Association. So please visit the website and download these two brochures for more details. <coughs> Let's come to the marketing tools. A new marketing tool, our so-called building space office, is now online available. This building space office is now an integral solution for modern office buildings with ABB devices. You can discover the wealth of the new possibilities here in this virtual building. So this virtual building is available on our website when you click on the link new abb.com slash building slash office. Um, the interactive design later you will see allows you to see the first hand how human needs, energy efficiency, and management targets can all be accommodated and how intelligent climate, liked and security management can influence the productivity. Now let's now discover this building space office online and let us do the step into a smart working environment. So now I share my desktop here. Okay. So now I'm here on this website, newabb.com slash buildings slash building space office. We can see here on the first page uh, a few of this building space hotel. When we, uh, build, sorry, office, office, when we click here on the left side of our mouse and then we can change here the view. So let's go for example here to this side. And you see here also a lot of office, open plan office, or for example conference rooms. And when you when you click here on this button, then you can jump directly here to the director office, 
or when we go here to the next button, then we can jump in the conference room, or we can still here change against the view. And we have, for example, here this view. We can go here to our entrance. So that's why I'd like to start here with the entrance area. So we click here on the entrance, and then we have to wait just just a second. Coming soon. No. Okay, now we are now in the entrance area. You get also here information how to use this application. The same principle, we press the left side of our mouse and then we can change here the view. You see here the real the entrance or we go back here this direction. Uh, so now we go here to the entrance and again you see here some small buttons. So when we see here for example uh, we can see here the button for door communication system. So when we press here this button we get a pop-up window which explain here our door communication system uh, the ABB Welcome Outdoor Video Station. Yeah, you can read here some more information about the welcome system. Yeah, here on the uh, on when you click on this button, then we jump to the product information of the welcome system. And here on the right side, we have related links, for example, to the ABP Free at Home panel or to the welcome touch. So now and here with the cross, we can close here our welcome system. Or for example here we have here some information about the liked, the push master liked, also here the product information and the link here to the LEDs for example. So or here maybe on this side we have our push watchdog so we get here the information about the push watchdog device, the motion sensor and then we go inside the building so we scroll a little bit down and then we have here the next area. One is for example the director office. So we click here on the button director office and then we have to wait again some seconds. Mm, no, the new page is loading. Page is available, okay. And then now we are here in the director office. Same principle, press the left side of the mouse and then we can change here the view. Go to this side or this side. Uh, and see all our ABP devices, like for example here our room control, press the button, then we get the information of the Bush Prion, what is the Prion, the link here to the product information, and also to related devices like the shutter actuator or the DALI gateways, fan coil actuators, and so on. Uh, or here, for example, on the desk we have the room control apps. So we here we have our new Bush Control Touch Kenix device, which was here shown also on the fair. Uh, including all the features, product information, or for example, let's go here again. We have here the socket outlets, for example, the special socket outlets here with the with the USB socket outlet to charge, for example, here your your mobile phone, such things, and so on. And we have here our open plan office and the conference room. At last, I would like to go here to the open plan office. Also, wait some seconds. Okay. And we are in the open plan office. <clears throat> Same again, we get here a lot of buttons. For example, one here on the ceiling, which which is here. So when I click here and your window pops up, I get here information about energy efficiency light control with the DALI gateways or the DALI light controllers. Yeah, or here, for example, the presence detector, yeah, the new one, all information product information and so on, including also here the socket outlets, the communication system, the different, for example, network uh, outlets, including Wi-Fi or non-Wi-Fi. And here, for example, behind this wall, we have the distribution board with the different energy meter and the distribution units. Yeah. So you will see a lot of information and new of APP devices. Good. So far, I would like to go back to the presentations just a second good another <coughs> marketing brochure or two marketing brochures we have launched at a like building is here one for um, KNX in commercial buildings here is the order number for this brochure in English this brochure is also available for the German market in German or for Switzerland and Austria and here we have the brochure the Buschega innovations 2016 also here with the order number Good, I think we are the end of the webinar. Very important, our next webinar will take place on the Wednesday, every, every time Wednesday, on the 27th of April, so at the end of this month, same time, 9 o'clock morning German time, and in the afternoon, 3 o'clock. 
So the topics, uh, the topic of this next webinar is again news like in building 2016, but with the part two. So we will show you some new devices, for example, the ABB Welcome for entry system, the new KNX sensors and DIMA, the KNX Control Touch, and ABB Free at Home Wireless. So not only wired, we have also wireless devices and some more yeah, very nice tools and devices. So the next webinar, Thorsten, Ilya and me, now we are together in one team. We will start together with this webinar on the 27th of April. Thank you for taking part. We are looking forward to welcome you again on the 27th. You will get, of course, invitation email soon, but remember the day and yeah, we're looking forward to welcome you again. Have a nice day. Goodbye and hope to see you again on the 27th of April. Goodbye. Bye bye. Ciao. See you.